Raleigh. Hello. Raleigh has brought me his Jeep, and he's got a good looking Jeep. I'm gonna back up so you can see it a little bit. Uh, notice the nice big old tars on it, and wheels, mighty fine wheels, and oh, nice shiny paint job, and oh, just look at it. Should have took a picture before we got in here in the garage space. Nice front bumper and and LED headlights and all of that. But we got what a lot of old Jeeps get, which is floorboard rust. And so uh, basically he's going to fix that and I'm going to help him. So that's what we're doing right now is he's taking out all those little rubber pieces on the interior so that we can get the carpet out so we can get to the floorboard. Oh, the joy. Okay, YouTubers, we'll get a little update on where we're at with Riley's Jeep. Uh, he has just taken the final bolt out of the seat. And one of the things we figured out is this is pretty much, that whole floor is gone and a little bit of the back floor is gone. Just throw that right in the jug. I think a jug may be in the floor. And I'm going to have you take all these things that are on the seat and put them up there in the floor. Because you're, you're about to pick that seat up and lift it out. The way you're going to do that is just kind of tilt it over toward you and then you have to kind of lift it and work it around the steering wheel and hold it stop. Now there's a thing here that's a, like a seat belt. You know that little buzzer for your seat belt? It's right here. I'm going to unplug it. If you can just tilt that up and there you go. Uh, and let me, I'm going to cut the camera off while I... That's just stupid. I mean, I shouldn't say that. But I mean, that's the kind of thing people tell you when they'd really rather you buy a new car from them and, and sell you their Jeep cheap because they're pretty sure that they can do what we're doing. Turn around and resell it and make some more money off of it. That green Jeep back there belonged to somebody I knew and I was in, I was in Georgia so she took it to a local mechanic kind of guy. Battery's dead so he said well you got to have a new battery first so she put a new battery in it. And then he started listing, okay, now it's got to have this and that and the other thing, and it won't run right. And, you know, told her that it wasn't, like, like you, told her it wasn't worth fixing. So I, I brought it home and took the little thing apart on the uh, injector, cleaned it, put it back on there, cranked it and drove it, and uh, did a little body work on it, a lot less serious. Her, her rocker panels were bad, but the floor and all was good. So she sold it to me for the price of the battery. I was in Georgia. She said, if you'll give me what I spent for the battery, you can have it. And I wasn't even here, so I called my neighbor and I said, there's a Jeep parked over there. Would you go get it? He said, sure. So he brought it home. And then when I got home, I, I was expecting it to be a pile of junk because the same thing they told you, it wasn't any good. So he comes driving it up in the yard. I said, I got your Jeep here. He said, I borrowed your battery out of it. Okay, you can lift that out now. Gonna have to wangle, you have to get this side up and wangle it under the steering wheel. I'll need to come around and help and find a place to put it, I believe. So, let me get, get around there. I can't believe I told you this thing wasn't worth fixing. This is unbelievable. Okay, now the first thing I always do is put all my tools back. I tend to divide everything up into little projects because if we try, to, if I ever try to do a whole project, it would overwhelm me all the different, you know, aspects. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if I'd say, okay, today, let's see if I can get that seat out, mm -hmm. or let's see if we can get the carpet out. You know, just like one thing, one step at a time. And a lot of times, after I do that one step, I don't need my tools there because they're, they're actually right in the way. So I put everything. You know, all the screwdrivers in the screwdriver box. And that's really the only way I've ever been able to find that I can keep track of stuff. These two go in that drawer, second from the top. I mean, from the bottom, this drawer. Yeah, I'll have all my analog wrenches in one, and all my three sixteenths in another one, and you know, all that stuff. This hammer goes right beside the tool right there. Yeah. This will go in on any shelf here you can find because we're going to come back on it again. And these bolts, I'm going to put these screws in your cup holder right there. 
this hammer you go right over there with those hammers now the next thing to come out is this piece it's almost just like that other piece there may or may not be a screw in it somewhere I'll let you look at it on the side and there's a light if you want to pull that light around front so you can see Yeah, I can't believe they told you this thing wasn't safe. Well, that's just, that's just crazy making. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you another rule, when someone tells me something like that, I tend to never go back. Because that, that shows me there that they're not the person I want to have to intend. It's going to pop off. It may pop off. Yeah. Sweet. And so we will. Now, the next thing we got to figure out, see, your carpet should just start being able to come out but it's going to go up in there and i don't know if it's attached if there's anything holding it if we can just peel it back what i've done on my friend's jeep is just take a knife and cut it and like i say it's pretty good carpet it's going to be hard to get out because it's glued to the floor and it's got this stuff oh that was done like a joke glued to the floor you see before <laughs> yes glued to the floor yeah. But anyway, start messing around with see if you can figure out how to get that or if it's possible to get it out without cutting it. Oh, you're looking good so far. I like the way you're going. Yeah. I like I like what you're doing there. Okay. That's good. That stuff up under the carpet is called jute. It's basically it's insulation, it's fiber. Uh, and it's insulation and it's also going to be hard to get out but it, it won't be too bad and what we're going to do with it we may have to unloose something, something back there but we're going to try to lift it up and fold it lift it up over this hump with the carpet up in here because there's rust holes right in this part that's got to be welded and so uh, if we can if we can if we can get that up here high enough so we can get to that peel it up and then fold it back down that will save your carpet uh, i'm gonna come around with you because i'm not sure if there's anything back at the back that that carpet you might can tell with your light uh, if you look at look at what is there yeah see that where that plastic kind of no i wonder i wonder if that lifts out and i wonder if we flip the seat forward it, uh, if we could see what we'd have to do to get that loose back there. I'll come around. So, basically what we got here is rusty floorboards and uh, I decided we'd try to save the uh, carpet because the carpet is actually nice in this. So we just, uh, peeled it back and I set this box over in there so we could drive it but it's not the worst I've ever seen uh, got some holes up in there and some holes back in there but I didn't have any order the pieces for the front and the back so he's gonna come back in a few days and we'll uh, we'll cut out the metal that we're gonna get rid of and uh, and then put them new floors in it. And then we got some more rust repaired door on the other side in the floor, but it ain't nearly as bad. This is a very nice Jeep. Uh, it's interesting. He took it to, he bought it. He took it to somebody to inspect it. And they told him not only they wouldn't inspect it, but they didn't think it was worth saving. They told him uh, it wasn't worth fixing. Now you see what, what it's got for rust. And he went around and found a few things, you know, here and there that he said wasn't wasn't right. But man, anybody that ever says a vehicle like this ain't worth saving, I'd never go back to him. That's just my two cents worth. Y'all can think what you want to think. That's what I think. So he's coming back later. In the meantime, I'm free to work on my stuff, and that's what I'll do. Hope y'all have a nice day wherever you are. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that there. See you. Bye.